it's great to chat with you today. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks so much. So I guess my first question is, what was it like working with Nicole for this project? Because obviously, I mean, her creative influence on this this film is is really astounding. There's there's a level of finesse in every detail. Uh, so what did she, how did she direct you? Nicole was really great to work with. Um, right from even before I even got the part, we had a FaceTime call to talk about the character and talk about the film. And I just loved what she had to say about it. And I mean, right before I met her, even like reading the script, I just knew I had to be a part of this film. It was really important to me. Um, So I felt like I already knew a piece of her because you can tell she's put so much into the script. So then speaking with her, I really felt a large amount of respect for her. Like she, the way she spoke about it was really smart and to the point. And it was interesting and it caught me off guard because I was excited to work with a female director and I thought we would maybe, you know, with that male gaze in my brain, I was like, it's going to be about emotions and blah, blah, blah. But she was, she just trusted me and I trusted her and You know, she was very to the point, which I really liked. If there was a scene we had to do again, she would tell me we're doing it again. And and she didn't spend a lot of time um, going piece by piece. We did that before the film even started. Mm. We sat down together and she had a journal where she mapped out Jackie's brain. And um, what's it called? Is that the, the Miles Briggs test? Okay, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So she told me what what Jackie was, and that actually helped me quite a lot. And Jackie was very similar to me, I remember. What? How do you envision the character from the start compared to the end? Because she does go through quite a change. I'm curious how you think that, that, that affected her. Well, I think what I love so much about Jackie is... She's real. I think when I spoke to so many women after they watched the film at various film festivals, like almost every woman said they saw pieces of themselves in Jackie. And mm-hmm. I think it's because you actually see a f- young female character portrayed on screen as a human. You know, they're not specifically girl, young, or whatever. Like it can be put into any decade, it can be put into any town. Jackie mm-hmm. is we get to see her at that time of coming of age where she begins to question everything in her life and what she wants to do with the rest of her life. And it's huge questions she's starting to ask herself and ask the world around her. Um, But from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, I felt it was just, this is going to be such a simple answer, but it was just human. It was just, she was trying her best and never made a right or a wrong choice. It was always, you could see where she was coming from. You could see her environment and why she was struggling so much. And by the end of the film, we see she's liberated in her own way. I think she had the influence of Amber, who was all about like sexual liberation and popularity, which are really Amber's driving forces, but definitely not Jackie's. So at the end of the film, when we can see her feel maybe not confident, I think liberated is the right word, like empowered to the beat of her own drum. That was just really beautiful. I, I, it, it's such an eloquent film because it goes in directions you're not expecting. I think because we've gotten used to seeing so many films that don't know how to treat uh, young characters, especially. Mm-hmm. So then for you approaching... It, there is an element of the era within it. I mean, it certainly is timeless in one way. Mm-hmm. But for you to get into the headspace of that time frame, did you were you watching anything or doing anything? I don't know. I mean, so it's the eighties. I mean, I've always loved eighties movies, so I think I understood where it was coming from. I mean, the biggest takeaway with it was there's no cell phones. <laughs> well it's true I mean when you look at 
I mean, any TV show now today, it's like they have the phone screen pop up on the side. Like it's phones are now like half of our life is, is through a phone. So I think it was smart of Nicole <laughs> to, to choose the eighties so we can just eliminate that and ignore that whole element to it. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I think I remember specifically listening to eighties music because I listened to a lot of music in my everyday life. So I think I, I made the effort and conscious decision to keep it eighties, but I really did feel like it was timeless. Like it didn't affect mm -hmm. for sure too much, you know? Yeah. In a wonderful way, because I, I really can't think of too many films that had that timeless quality to, to this kind of story, really. Yeah. So on the other side of this, uh, you know, there is this build up to the scene with Ryan and this kind of magical way that she provides answers for him that are both internal and external to his character. Mm -hmm. What did you guys go through to prep for that scene? Because it feels like you you must have done something. It was it was just so eloquent. <laughs> OK, well, you know what? The ending scene, we actually shot multiple endings that day. There were, I want to say three to five alternate wow. endings, actually. Um, so I really didn't know where it was going to go. And in the original script, the ending is what you think it would be. Mm. I'm trying not to give away too much here. Um, but the ending is what you think it would be. And so that's what I was ready for when I walked onto set that day. And it was actually Nicole who came up to me and she had written out a thing for me to say. She's like, I want you to say this. I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? What? <laughs> and it was, it was totally, you know, the opposite end of mm, the ending I was prepared for. So we actually didn't have a lot of preparation and there wasn't a lot of, breaking it down and what that means and what that means to him and what it means to my character. It was just kind of Ryan and I walked on the set and we were ready to give these characters their moment. Um, and so we just tried it different ways. Um, but that, that, that ending I thought was so beautiful and so powerful in a million and 10 ways. Um, but Nicole's writing is what made it all the way. Like I could not have, you know, I think if any of those sentences were said in a different way, it would have totally impacted the ending and the truthfulness to it. Um, so Nicole gets all the credit for that. That wasn't me. That was Nicole. <laughs> I think the performances are amazing. You and Ryan, the, the separate forces you can feel almost the force of nature of where she's coming from and the turmoil she's going through it while his very different turmoil as well uh i i'm curious then you know in, in the context of all this did i as a viewer like have you watched the film yeah and what did you take away after watching it i'm curious well, you know what? I, I don't think I'll ever forget watching the movie for the first time because we watched it the first time at the TIFF premiere, like with right. the rest of the audience. And at that point, I still didn't know the ending. Oh, so wow. it was really suspenseful for me. Um, and I had, I thought it was going to go a different way. I really did. Even, you know, being an actress in it, I had no idea. And after, the film ended, I felt like I can't go do interviews right now. I have to talk to people about this. I have to like break this down. I need to sit with this. It was, it, it, it's one of those movies that you just want to talk about for hours and hours after with other people and get their reactions to. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like an actress in the movie. I really felt like an audience member. Uh, it totally blew me away. And honestly, as each day passed and we had more interviews and watched the movie again and spend more time syncing with it, it, it 
I love the ending more and more. I think it was so important. I think Nicole is so brilliant and so smart and she knew exactly what the film needed, but also what Dennis needed, what Jackie needed and what audiences needed. Because, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the ending or whatever, but I'll just say this one little bit. You can cut it out. But um, I think Nicole said this in interviews and I respect it so much that for Dennis to end up destroying Jackie, it shows everyone everywhere that this is the only path men can take if they feel this way, if their mental health is not in the right place, if they are destructive to themselves and others, this is the only result that it ends up in. That's not the takeaway we need right now. When we have this Me Too movement and we're talking about where do we go from here, if we're telling stories where it ends in the worst way possible, well, then there's nowhere else to go. So it's so important that we have this ending where we're left with, and it's not a Hollywood ending. It's not everybody ends up happy. We don't know where Dennis goes off to and we don't know where Jackie goes off to, but it leaves us with a feeling of there's more out there, which I love. It's the topic is so timely. It's amazing, even thinking of when it came out at TIFF, how timely it was then and now. Mm -hmm. And I love to like I was dreading the ending. I was, you know, I was I knew where 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 we've been trained, where these stories <laughs> go. And yeah. it was it was troubling to go through these scenes and and feel that. And then to have it have such a different message at the end that it, it almost speaks to the humanity that. Mm -hmm that different people from different places can have similar truths at least, or at least answers to certain questions that might spark them both. So yeah, it's, it's wonderful. You, you, you all did such a phenomenal job. It's, it's great to see. Thank you. <laughs> the last thing I'll ask is what else is going on with you now? Well, so after black complex, I shot the dark and the wicked, which is Brian Bertino's, new horror film which has been getting amazing reviews and i'm so proud of him and everybody in it it's an awesome movie um so that was a really a huge pleasure to be a part of and then in june of this year i just shot a hallmark movie based on a book called rise and shine benedict stone and that was a lot of fun we shot that on vancouver island and it was just a total dream come true that was the most fun thing to do because I'm used to things like Black Complex where it's suspense and horror or thriller and it's dark and doing a Hallmark movie is definitely the opposite of that. So after having a year of the pandemic, it was a good sigh of relief to just play something family friendly and, and sweet. <laughs> That's amazing. There's there's room in every resume for for projects that you're going to love and and projects that are going to compel in different ways. Exactly. And I just love them all. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the time. I I hope to get to speak to you again whatever comes next. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.